Hi there, this is David and welcome to another crowdsourced video detailing my Discord server's top 10 best RPG blue mages. So far we've discussed monks, thieves, white mages, black mages, archers, bards, dancers, gunners, sages, summoners, and red mages. And now it's time for some more colorful fun. This series does seem to be pretty popular, and if you want to take part two, be sure to come and join the Discord. Please keep in mind that this is not necessarily my opinion, but the opinion of the best Discord server around. So join and become part of the fun as the series continues throughout the rest of the year. Also, just to keep things interesting and not chock full of fun of fantasy, I did keep all the franchises limited to only two submissions. So with that, let's observe some monsters and steal their moves. Number 10, submitted by Nova Saver and receiving 35 votes, is Ricky from Saga Frontier. Ricky is a naive and friendly lummox whose home region is dying. But as luck would have it, he's in possession of one of the legendary rings that will allow him to save his homeland when they're all gathered together. So off he goes, together with Mei Ling, on a search for the Dragon Balls, or the uh, Rings of Power. Like all monsters in the game, Ricky absorbs abilities from his enemies with powerful options like Death Gaze, Oscillation, and Maelstrom. But since they become other monsters entirely, what you really want is a couple of good abilities while maintaining the right form. Monsters are often written off as weak, but if you know what you're doing, he can be a powerhouse. Number 9, submitted by All Cast and Black Box, and receiving 36 votes, is Musashi from Brave Fencer, Musashi. Our spunky legendary hero is a tad bit undercooked. However, there's a feast of characters ready to support him on his journey, regardless of his lack of preparation. Armed with his trusty fusion sword, our lovable little blueberry can absorb the monsters that he encounters in order to gain their abilities to slice and dice his way through the hordes of them, or even use his newfound powers to solve puzzles and cook other enemies. Like most blue mages, he hits like a truck, especially with his second sword. The boss battles are also such a treat. Each one puts you to the test to ensure that you've mastered your flavor of the month scroll powers. It's great to see him whip up a recipe for success on the fly. Number 8, submitted by Black Box and receiving 41 votes, is Anastasia of Shadowheart's Covenant. Anastasia is the youngest daughter of the Romanov dynasty and joins Yuri and company shortly before the Russian Revolution in this alternate history dark fantasy RPG. She's strong-willed, courageous, and mouthy, with a penchant for ignoring signs of danger. This strong-willed princess comes equipped with a trusty camera, and with it, she can snap a picture of any enemy and scan them. However, some unfortunate souls also provide her with a nice photo for her album. Anytime after that, she can pull out a photo and call forth its subject to perform a special ability at her behest. I mean, I have no idea how she captures the soul of a giant steampunk mecha, but whatever, I'm here for it. Number 7, submitted by Ozander, Travis Milker, and Sean, and receiving 45 votes, is Mega Man EXE from the Mega Man Battle Network series. Well, Mega Man obviously isn't exactly a traditional mage, I mean, he doesn't cast spells or anything, but he stars in a pretty extensive RPG series on the Game Boy Advance, and just as in the classic games where he learns new abilities from defeating the Robot Masters, here, the Blue Bomber learns new attacks and skills from nearly every single enemy in the entire game, not just the bosses. They work a bit differently here, though, because they actually form kind of a deck that he can use in battle, similar to, say, Magi Nation or Baton Kaitos. Normally, I don't include protagonists on these lists, but since he's really the only character and he's so beloved, I figured what the hell, let's give Rockman some love. Number 6, submitted by Elise and receiving 45 votes, is Marivelle from Wild Arms 2. While she might look like some little girl on the surface, in reality, she's a vampire, or a crimson noble in the world of Fagaya, and sucking blood is what gives her all her powers. Basically, in battle, Marivelle uses her signature Skill Drain ability to gain blue magic abilities for herself. And while Lilka's spells are pretty much just run-of-the-mill, black and white, basic bitch stuff, and Tim's are pretty powerful multi-targeting spells, Marivelle's are much more esoteric. Our immortal introvert may be hesitant to join your team, but it would be a mistake to not pick her up. Just don't get on her bad side, or she won't hesitate to sacrifice you for the sake of more power. Number 5, submitted by Dingus Laser and Quarry, and receiving 46 votes, is Soma from Castlevania, Arya, and Dawn of Sorrow. Soma is just a normal, average, everyday man who unfortunately gets dragged into a conflict involving the incarnation of the next Dark Lord after the destruction of Dracula years prior. 
Due to the nature of Soma's existence, he has inherited the ability to use the powers of dominance, which allows him to take on the souls of the enemies that he kills and acquire their abilities. But what's cool about it is the way that it's implemented. Each soul drops randomly, so nearly every playthrough you'll get to experience different souls that you may not have gotten in your previous runs. So, this is one of the cooler mechanics in the Castlevania series, and even though it's not exactly the most JRPG-ish thing I've ever played, I did want to include it here because it's just so cool. Number 4, submitted by Professor Olsen and receiving 46 votes, is the whole trio from Legend of Lagaya. The magic system in the world of Lagaya is extremely unique, and I do wish that it was implemented in more games. Throughout the world are monsters, of course, but some of these monsters are vicious Seru who have magical abilities. However, your trio of heroes can absorb those Seru into their raw Seru and then cast the enemy's spells themselves. It's fun, intuitive, and makes exploring every area exciting as you try to learn all the magic. Each of your heroes has their own strengths and weaknesses too. Vaughn is average in every way, while Noah's is the weakest caster but easily the fastest, and Gala is the slowest but the best caster. God, I want a sequel to this. Well, a good sequel to this game. Number three, submitted by Wills and Alcast, and receiving 47 votes, is Sprig from Chrono Cross. As the sole resident of the Temporal Vortex, Sprig is a strange one, eking out a quiet life of contemplation and solitude. However, she's happy when Surge pops in, and together, they're both able to escape, and she also rescues him from his own mind. Her ability to doppelgang allows her to transform and mimic all enemy techs, stats, appearances, as well as her strengths and weaknesses by collecting them in her forget-me-not pot. They really did make her unique, but it's just too bad that Square didn't give any sort of differentiation to the other 45 characters in this monstrosity. For the most part, they're all just interchangeable, but Sprig at least stands out from the crowd. Number 2, submitted by Casual Tom and Corvus Call and receiving 70 votes, is Strago from Final Fantasy VI. Blue mages were first introduced in Final Fantasy V, and there, they could only learn magic if they were targeted. Strago, on the other hand, is able to learn blue magic simply by witnessing it. He can see an enemy cast it, or learn it even if it comes from a sketch or a rage, which makes teaching him the spells so much easier. He comes with Aqua Breath, which is extremely useful and powerful, and he has his own endgame side quest, getting revenge on Hidon at Ebbets Rock where he can learn the ultimate blue magic spell, Grand Train. Not to mention, the old Coot is just a great caster in general. He can do equip both the Magus Rod and the Behemoth Suit, granting him an extra 13 magic power. And number one, submitted by Rafi and Zyrus, and receiving 98 votes, is Kina from Final Fantasy IX. I'm convinced that people who don't like Kina just don't understand how to use them, or they think that they're ugly or something. But in reality, Kina is easily the best blue mage in the entire series. Their abilities like Bad Breath are a real help in just about every single battle, and they can hit weaknesses and change the course of the battle in ways that no other character can. Not only that, Kina's abilities aren't locked behind overdrives like certain other useless characters from the awful games in the series. Then there's the learning process. You don't have to risk getting hit by the spell or wait around forever hoping that the monster casts it. Kina just eats the bitch up and then boom, you've got the spell. I so happy. Well, that's it for the top 10 best JRPG blue mages as decided by my Discord server. We do have quite a few more honorable mentions though. Axel from Mega Man X Command Mission, Rue from Threads of Fate, Marlock from Shining Force, Vesalius of Saga Frontier, Baby from the Guardian's Crusade, Matt from Angels of Rizoran, Xandra from the Tiamat Sacrament, the Monster from the Final Fantasy Legend 2, Miriam from Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, Keats of Folklore, Masaru from Live a Live, Taika from Earthlock, and Kamari and Quistus from the Final Fantasy series. Who are your favorite Black Mages and why? Let me know in the comments, and if you want to take part in future class ranking videos, come and join the Discord channel to make your voice be heard too. As you can see, most of these guys are just like one or two votes away from each other. The link to it can be found in the video description as well as the comments. I do hope to see you there. And as always, if you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.